From those around, I hear a cry, a muffled sob, a hopeless sigh. I hear their footsteps leaving slow, and then I know my soul must fly. A chilly wind begins to blow within my soul from head to toe, and then last breath escapes my lips. It's time to leave and I must go. So it is true, but it's too late. They said each soul has its given day. When it must leave its body's core and meet with its eternal fate. Who mock the words that I do say? Who knows tomorrow could be your day? At last it comes to heaven or hell Decide which now do not delay Come on my brothers, let us pray Decide which now do not delay Nahmadu wa nusalli ala rasulihi al-kareem Amma baad Fa'audu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim Bismillahi r-Rahmani r-Rahim all praise is due to Allah, and may his peace and blessings be upon his last messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and on all those who follow the path of righteousness until last day. Rabbi shahli sadri wa isirli amri, wa halul uqdatam min lisani yaqahu qawli, Rabbi zidni ilma, Rabbi zidni ilma, Rabbi zidni ilma. Allah ma'imni asaluka ilman naqya wa rizqan tayyiba wa madam mutakabala. Ameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. In our last session, we discussed that at the moment of death, the soul leaves the body and it enters a different realm, which is alam e barzakh The stage of barzakh begins from the moment the ruh permanently leaves the body at the time of death and it ends at the last trumpet to be blown on the day of Qiyamah. Then we discuss the soul's departure and the journey to heaven. We also discussed burying of the deceased and the soul returning to the body. In, in today's session, inshallah, we will discuss about the lessons to be learned from death and then about the terrors of the grave and then fitna of, or the trial of the grave, inshallah. So... Uh, well, from the last three sessions, we have been discussing all about death and what do we understand from it? What lessons do we learn from it? In fact, death is the greatest lesson. So, people come into this dunya and they go from this dunya. Death is that ultimate reality that nobody can deny and nobody can escape from it. We have discussed all of this in our in our previous sessions. It the the death is uh, death is so uncertain that it can strike us any moment. So on the authority of Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu anhu, he relates that the uh, Prophet once held my shoulders and said, "Live in this world as if you are a traveler or a stranger." And Abdullah ibn Umar Razila used to say, if you live till night, then do not wait for the next day. That is, do not have hopes that you will live the, to the next day. And if you wake up in the morning, do not have hope that you will live till the night. And take advantage from your health before your sickness and take advantage of your life before your death. That is, do every possible obedience in your life before death comes to you, for then no deeds can be performed. This is narrated in Bukhari and Tirmidhi. So from this we understand that we should take the life that we spend in this dunya very seriously and strive hard to become a righteous believer. We should make use of this dunya to prepare for Akhirah. Because what comes after this life is just the result of our deeds. Now, for a 
disbeliever and a hypocrite who disbelieves in Allah, who disbelieves in the hereafter, who believes that the life of this dunya is the only life, who believes the life ends when one dies or believes that one takes rebirth into this dunya again, who does not believe in the accountability of his deeds. Just imagine his state when he faces the truth, when he faces the reality, when the angel of death call him to the anger, wrath and punishment of Allah. When he realizes that what all he believed is all wrong and the bitter reality is that he cannot go back to correct his deeds or his belief system. Just imagine how his condition would be. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, that when he sees the punishment, when the disbeliever sees the punishment, he says, It is in Zumar. Um, that if only I had another turn, so I could be among the doers of good. But now it is impossible. He is an utter failure. There is no going back. He realizes this fact when he sees the angel of death and hence he does not want to die. He tries to run away from death but the angels never fail in their duty. Just imagine how hard it would be for him. Allahu Akbar. But Alhamdulillah for a believer it is the moment of joy. Yes. Death is a moment of joy for a believer. When the angel of death gives glad tidings from Allah, he rejoices and will be longing to meet Allah. He forgets the hardships that he has faced and he was facing in this dunya, whatever he has faced in this dunya. His joy and happiness would be apparent. Subhanallah. This is the reward of being a righteous believer. Hence, the lesson that we should be learning from this is taking care of our deeds when we are alive. Whatever we have to do is we have to do it now. Ali Razila has said that this world is moving away from us and the hereafter is moving towards us. Each of them has its own people. So be among the people of the hereafter. Do not be among the people of this world. Today is striving and not reckoning, but tomorrow will be reckoning and not striving. Subhanallah. Hence, the deeds are very, very important. Our deeds are our earnings, which we carry with us to the next life. In a Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim Hadith, it is narrated that Anas bin Malik reported that Rasulullah said, Three things follow our deceased person. Two of them return and one remains. His family, his wealth and his deeds follow him. His family and his wealth return but his deeds remain. From this we understand that it is our deeds which are very very important. We should strive hard to better our deeds and please Allah to make our, our hereafter rewarding for us rather than the punishment and so that on the day of judgment we need not repent that ya laitani khaddam tu li hayati oh i wish i had sent ahead some good deeds for my life the life which is the actual eternal life which begins after our death allahu akbar so let's do our best to better our deeds inshallah now we understand the reward of being righteous. In addition to this, the fact is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hesitates to take a believer's soul. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hesitates to take a believer's soul. He subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the believer. He subhanahu wa ta'ala loves his obedience to him and to his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He subhanahu wa ta'ala loves his worship and his righteous deeds. In a Sahih Bukhari hadith narrated 
by Abu Huraira Razalatala knew that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Whosoever shows enmity to someone devoted to me, I shall be at war with him. My slave draws not near to me with anything more loved by me than the religious duties, that is the obligatory duties, that I have enjoined upon him. And my slave continues to draw near to me with supererogatory works, that is the nav- Nawafil, so that I shall love him. When I love him, I am his hearing with which he hears, his seeing with which he sees, his hand with which he strikes, and his fo- foot with which he walks. Were he to ask something of me, I would surely give it to him. And were he to ask me for refuge, I would surely grant it to him. I do not hesitate about anything as much as I hesitate about seizing the soul of my faithful slave. He hates death and I hate hurting him. The hesitation mentioned in this uh, hadith is hesitation in taking the soul of the believer out of mercy and compassion towards him and out of love for him because the believer hates death and so does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates hurting him subhanallah subhanallah this is such a beautiful hadith which encourages us to become that righteous person whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us and make us all and even our offspring to become that righteous person whom he subhanahu wa ta'ala loves Amen. Further uh, moving ahead, we have referred the hadith of al Bara ibn Azib to understand the happenings of the death. But this is not the only hadith which speaks about this journey. There are many ahadiths which are authentic. We have referred this because it gives the complete picture of what happens when the soul leaves the body and it's journeying through the next stage. But there are many ahadiths. Next, the other souls meeting the soul of a deceased person. In a hadith recorded by Ibn Hibban and Ibn Majah, verified by, to be authentic by Al-Albani, Abu Huraira Razalatallah narrated that Rasulullah Sallallahu said, the, uh, I'm just narrating the part of the main hadith, when a believer's soul is taken up to the heavens, the angels take, to, take it to the location of the souls of the believers, the other believers who, are, who have passed away. The other souls are happier in meeting him as if like meeting a beloved one who returns after a long absence. See the irony. We here in dunya grieve when a person passes away or dies. And the souls of the believers who have already passed away rejoice at the arrival of the soul. They, that is the other souls, ask about the people of this dunya, that what happened to such and such. While some of them interrupt and say, leave him until he rests because he was in the grief or hardship of the world. However, he answers them, If the person about whom they are asking about happens to be a righteous person, he says he did a righteous deed. And if he is a disbeliever or kafir, he says, he died. Did he not come to you? They say no. Then they say, then he was taken to a bottomless pit of hell. So from this we understand that the souls of the believers are together, separate from the souls of the disbelievers who are together with each other. Next. Now, let's see what the grave is and what is the life in alam e is. In the last session, we discussed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the angels to take the soul of the dead person, may it be a believer or a disbeliever, back to dunya, as from it we are created and from it, it will, we will be raised again. From this, we understand that even after death and until the time of resurrection, we will be in this dunya itself. 
and the soul is returned to the earth and it reunites to the body and the grave after his burial and no matter what the condition of the body is may it be drowned or decomposed or burnt into ashes or eaten by an animal so on and so forth the soul comes back down to wherever there are some remnants of the body the body need not be intact for it to come back uh the soul comes back to where the body is located however this reunion of the body and the soul is not the same as we have in this life of dunya but there will be some connection between body and soul allahu alam about the terrors of the grave uh hani the freed slave of usman raza allah taala anhu narrated that whenever usman raza allah taala anhu stood over a grave he would weep until his bed would get wet when it was said to him you remember paradise and hell and you do not weep but when you remember the grave you weep he said i heard rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that the grave is the first stage of the hereafter whoever passes through it safely whatever comes after that will be easier for him but if he does not pass through it e- safely whatever comes after that will be harder for him he then said and i heard rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam say i have never seen any disturbing scene more terrifying than the grave allah akbar hence for a righteous believer he will be shown the delights that allah subhanahu wa taala has prepared and stored for him and he will say o oh, oh lord hasten the coming of the hour because what is yet to come will be much more delightful than what he is experiencing in the grave now and for a disbeliever or a evil doer or an evil doer he will be shown the intense torment that allah subhanahu wa taala has prepared for him and despite the torment that he is suffering in his grave he says oh lord do not let the hour come because what is it to come is even worse and more terrifying astaghfirullah allah akbar next let's see what happens when the deceased is placed in the grave the squeezing of the grave when the deceased is placed in the grave and after the soul reunites with the body in the grave uh, as said in a manner which we cannot understand we cannot understand this reun- reunion it is beyond our in allahu alam so then the earth squeezes him no one is spared from the squeezing of the grave may it be great or small righteous or evil adult or a child no one can escape the squeezing of the grave and it is inevitable for every person in many authentic ahadith it is mentioned that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that there is squeezing in the grave if anyone were to have been saved from it it would have been saad bin muad raza allah taala anhu he was squeezed once then released in sunan sunan nasai uh, it is narrated by ibn umar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said this one at whose death the throne shook for whom the gates of heaven were opened and whose funeral was attended by 70000 angels has been squeezed once then relieved him this is referred to saad bin muad radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu from this we understand that the squeezing of the grave is inevitable for each and every person be it, uh, be a righteous or an evil doer or even the children are not spared from that next let's see the trial of the grave or fitnatul khabr the trial or fitna of the khabr is not the same as azab al khabr these two are different the fitna is the questioning by the angels and the azab al khabr is the punishment which they go through in the khabr in a sahih muslim hadith uh, hadith number 584 urwa bin az zubair 
narrated that his maternal aunt, that is Aisha Razila Tala Anha, said, The Prophet ﷺ entered my house when a Jewish woman was with me. She was saying, Do you know that you would be put to trial or tested in the grave? The Messenger of Allah ﷺ trembled on hearing this and said, It is the Jews only who would be put to trial or will be tested. Aisha Razalatalahnu then said, Several nights passed, then the Messenger of Allah said, Do you know that it has been revealed to me that you would be put to trial in the grave? Aisha Razalatalahnu then said, I heard the Messenger of Allah after that seeking refuge with Allah from the trial and the torment of the grave. After this incident, thus this trial or fitna of the grave is the questioning by the angels and the test we go through in the grave. The name of these angels is not mentioned in the hadith of uh, Bukhari and Muslim, but in Sunan, Sunan at Tirmidhi it says, When the deceased or when one of you is buried, two black and blue angels come to him one of whom is called Al-Munkar and the other is An-Nakir. So, the names are mentioned in Sunan Tirmidhi. So, thus, uh, when the disease is placed in the grave, the roof will be attached to the body or to the remnants of the body. And when his companions, after burying, leave him, he can hear their footsteps. Then, Two severe or horrendous looking angels will come in the frightening form. According to the uh, hadith narrated by Al Barai bin Azib, Prophet ﷺ said, Two very harsh angels come to him and treat him roughly and make him sit up. They ask him, Man Rabbuk, who is your Lord? He says, My Lord is Allah. Then they ask him, Ma dinuk, what is your religion? He says, my religion is Islam. Then they ask him, who is this man who was sent among you? He will reply, he is the messenger of Allah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then they ask him, how do you know all of these answers? Wa ma yudrik? He will say, I read the book of Allah. Then I believed in it and accepted it. Then a voice will call from the heavens, that is, Allah will say, He has spoken, my slave has spoken the truth. So spread out for him the couches of Jannah, and clothe him from the clothes of Jannah, and show him his place in Jannah, and open a door for him from the Jannah within his grave. So this is the second decree. The first decree was when it was said to write his name in the Iliin. Now, this is the second decree. In the grave, after answering Munkar and Nakir, this is the second decree. Scholars say the passing of Munkar and Nakir is not intellectual knowledge. It is the knowledge of the khalb. It is the knowledge you lived with. It is the knowledge of your life and what you believed and practiced. It is not the knowledge of your intellect. Because even a kafir at that stage knows that our Lord is Allah and our deen is Islam. We cannot cheat in this exam. The people outside cannot do anything to. There is no benefit of memorizing the, these answers. Rather, we should live with it. So, after this second decree, his grave will be made vast. As large as his eye can see, and a portal or a window will, will open up from which he can see his place in Jannah and he gets the fragrance of Jannah. Subhanallah. And he will hear the sounds of Jannah. And he will say, O oh Allah, hasten the judgment day so that I can enter the Jannah. Subhanallah. So this is the case of the righteous believer who passes his test. Next, then a very handsome his face will be bright and handsome, wearing good garments, and his smell will be sweet. Then he shall say to him, I have come to give you glad tidings of that which will make you happy. 
rejoice with the pleasure of Allah and delights that endure. This is the day that you were promised. Then the deceased person will say to that handsome entity that may Allah give you glad tidings. Who are you? Your face for your face is the face of someone who comes with good news. He replies, I am your good deeds coming back to you. So our good deeds will take a form that will bring us happiness, will give us companionship in the grave. We will feel an actual entity who is calming us down, making us happy. So our good deeds will become an actual comfort for us in the khabar. Then he will say, My Lord, by bring the hour so that I might return to my family and my wealth. It will be said to him, Be tranquil. Subhanallah. But for the kafir or fajir, that is for a disbeliever and hypocrites, it is exactly the opposite of what happens with the righteous believer. When the soul is thrown back from the sky and returned to, in, to, into his body, the Prophet ﷺ said, Verily he will hear the footsteps of the people who buried him when they leave him. Then two harsh, severe and fearsome angels, that is Munkar and Nakir, come and terrify him and make him sit up and ask him, Who is your Lord? He replies, Ha ha la adri. Ha ha, this is an expression of sorrow. Ha ha la adri. I don't know. Then they ask him, What is your religion? He again answers, Ha ha la adri. I don't know. Then they ask him, Who is this man who was sent among you? He'll say, Ha ha la adri. I don't know. The hypocrites say, I don't know. The people said he is so and so and I used to say what the people were saying about him. Then it is said to him, May you never know and may you never say what the people said. The hypocrite cannot answer these questions even though he knew the answers because he did not live upon it. He did not believe in it. He did not live upon it. Then the voice will call from the heaven that is Allah will say that he is lying. The kafir and hypocrite cannot answer these questions even though they now know that Allah is their Lord. This is because they never believed and practiced it when they were alive. So the caller will call from the sky that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, My slave has spoken falsely. So put around him the shroud of Jahannam, spread out for him from the hellfire, and allow him to look at his place in Jahannam, and open a door for him from the hellfire within his grave. So its heat and hot wind will come, come unto him. Then his grave, grave will be contracted upon him until his limbs are caught up among one another. Astaghfirullah then an entity will come to him. His face will be ugly and his clothes will be ugly and his smell will be despicable. Uh, then he says to him, I bring you tidings of that which will harm you. This is the day that you were promised. Then the deceased will say, O oh, to you, who are you? For your face is the face of someone who comes with evil. He replies, I am your evil deeds coming back to you. By Allah, I did not know of you, but that you were quick to the disobedience of Allah and slow to his obedience. Then he makes dua to Allah to punish him badly. A door of hell will be opened into his, uh, unto him within his grave and will spread out for him sheets of hellfire. Then he says, my Lord, do not bring the hour, because this is just the beginning and what will come is worse than this. Astaghfirullah, Allahu Akbar, may Allah save us from this. According to the Hadith of Anas, when the believing slave answers the questions in his grave truthfully, it is said to him, look at your place in hell, which Allah has saved for you from, saved for you from. Like this was the place reserved for you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has saved and, re and has replaced it with a place in paradise. 
then it is said that his grave is expanded for him by 70 cubits by 70 and it is filled with green until the day when they will be resurrected but when the kafir or hypocrite answers the, those questions in the grave wrongly it is said to him may you never know and may you never say what the people said then he is struck between the ears with an iron hammer and he utters a scream which everything can hear except for mankind and the jinn. Allahu Akbar. Actually, there are many ahadis which describe about the fitnatul khabr. All these ahadis indicate that everyone that is deceased will be shown his final abode in the grave. And according to the hadith narrated by Abdullah bin Umar, Razila Tala uh, Anhu, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when, when any one of you dies, he is shown his abode morning and evening. If he is one of the people of paradise, then he is one of the people of paradise. And if he is one of the people of hell, then he is one of the people of hell. And it is said to him, this is your place until Allah resurrects you on the day of resurrection. Again in Sunan Tirmidhi, it is narrated from Abu Huraira Razalatalanu that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that two angels say to the believing slave after he has answered their questions correctly, we knew that you would say that. Then his grave is expanded for him 70 cubits by 70 and it is illuminated for him. Then it is said to him, sleep. He says, let me go back to my family and tell them they say, sleep, sleep like the bridegroom who will not be woken up by anyone except the dearest of his family to him until Allah resurrects you from your place of rest. But uh, for the hypocrite and the disbeliever, uh, they say, we knew that you would, you would say this. Then it is said to the earth, squeeze him. So it squeezes him until his ribs interlock and he will be tormented until Allah resurrects him from his grave. So the questioning by the angels, Al-Munkar and an nakir in the grave is the trial of the grave or Fitnatul Khabr. After these questioning, the second decree will be decreed. After this second decree, their abodes will be shown to them and the portal or window of heaven and hell will be opened accordingly to the believer and the disbeliever. Then their graves will be expanded or constricted accordingly and the graves will be illuminated or darkened accordingly. Then the righteous believer will be put to sleep whereas the kafir and fajr will undergo the torment or azab of the grave. So this is the life of Barzakh. In Barzakh it is just the ambience what surrounds the soul. There will be either the comfort or the torture which the soul will experience. At this stage, there is no food and drink. In Barzakh, there is no eating and drinking. This will happen, that is eating and drinking will only will happen uh, only in this dunya and, in the, and then next in Jannah and Jahannam. That is when the soul gets a body or when the soul is in a body. In the grave, it is either an, the Naimul Khabr or the Azabul Khabr, which we will look into in our next session, inshallah. But before that, let's see who will be spared from the Fitnatul Khabr. Who will be tested in the grave and who will be spared? So the question is, will everybody undergo the Fitna? No. There are some categories who are spared from the fitna of the khabar, the trial of the khabar. There is some difference in opinion among the scholars considering this matter. However, it is said that the trial of the grave will happen to all of those who are accountable. The scholars say that prophets, shuhada or martyrs, and murabitu, those who guard the borders of Islam, are protected from this fitna. They do not undergo this test. The prophets, shuhada and murabitun. 
they do not undergo this test. Also, on a positive note, as per the hadith in Tirmidhi and Musnad Ahmad, whoever dies on Friday, they are protected from Fitnatul Khabr, which says, no Muslim dies on Yom al except that Allah shall protect him from Fitnatul Khabr. So, inshallah, it is a positive sign. Now, there is some dispute among scholars concerning the young children and insane. Some scholars say that they will not be tested on the grounds that they are not accountable. That is, they are those from whom the pen has been lifted. So, they will not be tested. But others said that they will be tested based on the hadith narrated from Abu, by Abu Huraira that Prophet ﷺ once offered the funeral prayer for a child. Then he ﷺ said, O oh Allah, protect him from the torment of the grave and the trial of the grave. Based on this, most of the scholars believe that even the children and the insane will undergo this trial or fitna. Allahu Alam. Further, it is authentically narrated from many ahadis that Prophet ﷺ regularly seek refuge from the fitna and the azab of the khabar. So, sincerely, if we make dua uh, from the protection from this fitna or the trial, and by Allah's mercy, we might be protected, inshallah, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all from the fitna al khabrami. So let's end the session here. The next session we will learn about the Azab al Khabr and about the life in Barsakh where the souls will be, inshallah. We end with the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanallah, wa bihamdihi, wa adada khalqihi, wa rida nafsihi, wa zinata arshihi, wa midada kalimatihi. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the blessed and those who are eternally rewarded. Ameen. Rabbana. آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار آمين Let's end this session here Inshallah in the next session we will learn about our nafs and more about عالم الدنيا جزاكم الله خير سبحانك اللهم وبهمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك واتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Who knows tomorrow could be your day At last it comes to heaven or hell Decide which now, do not delay Come on my brothers, let us pray Decide which now, do not delay Come on my brothers, let us pray Decide which now, do not delay